All right, Shalom Aki. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash for allowing me to do another lesson. Yahweh, who the world innovatively calls God, Yahweh Shai is his son, who the world innovatively calls Jesus Christ, and there's no God beside him. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect, whom the most I have blessed with is to hear. And um, based upon that statement, uh, Going into the lesson the brother had did. Uh, things can be a lot fucking worse. So be content. You know. A stern warning. Or you know not a warning. But more so of a. Of a. Um, a gut check. You know. Like get your shit together man. Stop complaining. Because things could be a lot worse. As the brother showed various pictures of people. With physical ailments. You know. Conjoined twins, people that are blind. One dude even had a testicle half the size of his body, man. You know, so things could be a lot worse. And, um, hey, this is a message to the elect. As we see through the spirit, the brother's lesson is 10 minutes and 44 seconds long. All right. So, um, just to add on to the brother, all right, which through the spirit, I had read, um, the book of Second Ezra 16, going into how in these last days, all of people, every man's work is going to come to naught, you know. So this is, uh, I want to start off with Ecclesiastes 2 and 3. I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I, till I might see what was, what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. So, the great king Solomon, whom the Most I have blessed with many things, most importantly wisdom, you know, and um, rulership over kingdoms, he was able to see how man was to live, you know, and what, what, what was that profitable unto a man's life? I made me great works I builded me houses I planted me vineyards I made me gardens and orchards and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits when you think of the American dream or just the dream for anybody anywhere you know I speak of the American dream because I'm over here in America it's to live peaceably to enjoy your work you know and um to kick back and not what you have set your hand to do. You know? A portion of the American dream could be to work, make a lot of money, to build a house. You know? Have a lot of land. So this is what King Solomon basically did. I made me gardens and orchards. I planted trees and them of all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possession of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasures of kings and of provinces. I got me men, singers, women singers and the delight of sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. Right? Because remember it was a it was an experiment. King Solomon went to grow in wisdom. He did his things not to uh be engulfed in it. You know, not to let him take he did these things to understand life. You know, not to just be in folly mode, but to un to re to really understand life. You know, the pros and cons of you know of doing these things, and whatsoever my eyes desire, I kept not. I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works of. That my hands had wrought, 
and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and that was no profit under the sun, and there was no profit under the sun. And I turned myself to behold wisdom and madness and folly, for what can the man do that cometh after the king? Even that which have been already done. Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly as far as light excelleth darkness. When you go into the word excel, it means profit. All right, gain, better excellency, profitable, preeminence. Okay, so now I'm going to jump over to uh, Second Ezra 16. All right, which these are plagues that the Lord is going to bring upon the world. All right, and at the end of the day, if you haven't realized it, you know. Which is why the Most High is sending us through so much pain. Is to choose wisdom. All right, you're gonna lose all, but choose wisdom because at the end of the day, what well, wisdom is gonna be sought sought of more than gold. As a, as a matter of fact, the scriptures say, I want to say in the book of Zephaniah. How? Let me grab it. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 15. That day, the day of Jacob's trouble, the day of the Lord's anger, is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of weightness, wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. Right, because what's going to end after the wars, whether it be civil wars, riots, you know, earthquakes, tsunamis, it's going to be topped off with a nuclear missiles, and that will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against Yahweh, and their blood shall be poured out as the dust, and their flesh as the dung. Right, they're going to walk as blind men because. They were all the time. They were all the time thinking that the flesh can save them, right? Actually, the scripture basically said that. Let me let me finish that off in Ecclesiastes two, and fourteen. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceive also that one event happeneth to them all. All right, so these fools spent all their life working on. Working on things that didn't profit them. All right. It says. Um, at verse 17. And I, will, and I will bring distress upon men. That they shall walk like blind men. Because they have sinned against Yahweh. Right. Which sin is a transgression of the law. And the Lord commanded us to what? Serve him and fear him. All right. You serving your money, you serving your family, you serving your woman, hell, you serving yourself. You're going to have to answer for that. And their blood shall be poured out as dust in their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Right? But the Lord is going to save us out of it. Scripture script saying Jeremiah 30 and 6. Right? That the Lord is going to save him out of it. Isaiah 26 and 3 speaks about how the Lord is going to um deliver us while his while that wrath that he speaks of in Zephaniah 1 is um being, you know, or while the people is is, is bathing in, in the Lord's wrath. Revelation 15 uh capitalizes on that as well. And I, you know, I had to bring that out. Because you're going to have people that uh say, well, you're going to be in this land too. No, not necessarily. We doing what we got to do, you know. We uh received the Lord's, um. we changed our ways B times. And the Lord's willing, he can be, uh, 
You know what I'm saying? He will uh, accept, you know, accept our sacrifice. So it says, there's a scripture as I go into a second address where it speaks about um, the life to come is for those who have uh, basically uh, utilized abstinence. You know, through the spirit, that's what we're doing by, uh, oh, another one. As I, you know, kind of thinking out loud, Second Peter's four says they says they that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. You know, so here it is. We got less, but hey, we're actually growing. You know, we're gonna come out with more, more mercy. It's gonna be given to us than the rest of the world. All right, more favor, and ultimately the riches because wisdom is gonna be more. Sort of than gold As the scriptures say The man of the Lord is going to be as gold You know More precious than gold Because we got the wisdom We understand what's going on Alright And um We ain't alright We you know We we doing what we got to do To uh Hopefully be Pass Pass by So reading on in 2nd Ezra 16 It says Uh, and 36, behold, the world, the word of the Lord, receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth her son with two or three hours of her of her birth. Great pains can pass her womb, which pains when the child cometh forth. They slack not a moment. Even so, shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth. And the world shall mourn, and sorrows shall come upon it on every side. O oh, my people, hear my word, make you ready to the battle, and in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away, and he that buyeth as one that will lose. He that occupieth merchandise, as he that have not no profit by it, and he that buildeth, as he that shall not dwell therein. He that soweth as if he shall not reap, so also he that planteth the vineyard as he that shall not gather grapes. They that marry as they that shall get no children, and they that marry not as the widowers. And therefore they that labor, labor in vain, for strangers shall reap their fruits, spoil their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children captives. And we're going to see that very soon. As prices skyrocket, it's going to be the haves versus the have-nots, you know? And this is already in a so-called stable society where people rob and loot. So how much more when an unstable society is, uh, you know, comes comes to more of a, uh, you know, comes to more of a, a reality for everybody. And take their children captives... For strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses and take their children captives. For in captivity and famine shall they get children. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, the more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons. The more will I be angry with them, for their sin saith the Lord. You see? So, hey man, the more the Lord takes away from us, the happier we should be. You know, knowing that the end goal is that everybody's going to lose. You know, but we have time to receive wisdom. We have time to receive uh, the true comforter, which is this word. So if that, Lord willing, you I can edify, shalom to the elect.